And uh, Sam, stay in the line. I'll send you a copy of Government Zero. I don't make any money off that. I'm not greedy. I don't even. I haven't spoken to this young man in a long time. I want to help people. Is what I want to do. All right, let's get some callers going on the Savage Nation. Jason on KSFO, San Francisco. Jason, what you calling about? Well, I have a, a pretty good story for you, sir. Um, I uh, live in a crazy liberal state of California in a crazy liberal city outside of San Francisco. And I went in to get your book yesterday at Barnes & Noble, and you'll be happy to hear that it was right up front, right between the Bill O'Reilly book and uh, Ben Carson. I, I then took the book up to the 24-year-old cashier, and she says, you know, I've sold three of these in the last 30 minutes. Where, where is this? Uh, uh, Barnes & Noble where? Well, specifically, it's in Dublin, California, which is out in the East Bay, east of San Francisco. Oh, come on. That's not San Francisco. That's kind of, that's like saying Queens is a Manhattan. You know, I love Dublin, but you know, San Francisco is a whole different universe. But anyway, it's a good, good news story, my friend, and I thank you for reporting as one of my field lieutenants out there in the Savage Nation. All right. That's the Savage Nation. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Can you imagine what the cars in the kid's head? So listen to this. During a break early, I went out on the deck, and I took a picture of Teddy asleep in the sun. I put a copy of Gunman Zero next to him. You know, I've been doing that on my Facebook. People love, you know, it's like pictures of the dog seem to attract more response than anything else. And, it, it, you know, I didn't know how Facebook was. It says, dozing off is performing better than 95% of your recent posts. So I wrote, I make a little headline. I wrote, dozing off in the sun after another chapter. So there's Teddy Fluffball. So I look at some of the things people are writing, and people write the funniest thing. Wait, i got to read you some of these things. One of them says, Brandon... Mikowski says, after reading Trickle Up Poverty, Trickle Down Tyranny, and now Government Zero, Teddy is now smarter than the talk show hosts that compete with you. <laughs> God, that's terrible. Next one uh, says, Art and Gene Valero say, Michael, what chapter in Government Zero is Teddy on now? And Teddy is so handsome, I sure wish I had more time to pass the days to read more of your book. And then there's a picture of other people's door. Oh, here, on the table in front of Barnes & Noble in Arlington, Texas, from Carla Trent Rogers. Then I got pictures of other people's poodles. Randy Scott says, I guess my female toy poodle, Shrimpy, is a man-hater. When I showed her Teddy's picture, this happened. Well, by the way, she's 15. <laughs> I hear little dogs live long. I hope so. I really don't know. I, can, I don't really want to look forward. Anyway. Next one, <laughs> look at that black toy poodle. Someone put my book inside their bed. That's hilarious. Please don't let it do what on it. Come on. That wouldn't be nice. Next one, Teddy is smart, too, reads only good books. Here's a guy who took a picture of his dog next to a glass of Guinness on a bar, top of a bar. I like that. Pete Za, go, T. go, Pete. Tracy, you go, Teddy. Love your posts of Teddy and very much enjoyed reading Government Zero. I was frightened and yet invigorated by reading it. God be with you. I think God gave up on me. I'm not so sure. I think he's busy on Mars. Since they found water, I think he's trying to populate it with uh, conservatives since there are so few left on the, on the Earth. <laughs> here's more. Very good. So I envy Teddy. He is living a life, saving the world. Oh, here's funny. Laura Red Chantou says, saving the world is exhausting. Then Tisha writes uh, this. Uh, Tisha Vigil says, it's actually sunny in the Bay Area. Yeah. Oh, yeah, all of the climatologists told us we were going to have a rainstorm yesterday. People bought sandbags. They were uh, pu putting plastic sheets on houses. Oh, yeah, all of the climate scientists have told us that the world's coming to an end because of global warming. They absolutely, within 100% predictability, said there was going to be a huge rainstorm yesterday. It didn't even sweat. There was more moisture produced by me bicycling around the block than came out of the sky. Yeah. Here's another one says, Teddy is trying to figure out how come liberals chase their tail more. <laughs> come on. David Mitchell says, Teddy is trying to figure out how come liberals chase their tail more than dogs. <laughs> and it wore him out this badly. <laughs> oh, Scott was offended by the full frontal yesterday. Okay, I understand. That's a little sensitive. Scott Evans says, this is better, not full frontal like yesterday. You know, that's a sensitive issue with dogs. But they lay on their back. What are you supposed to do? Put chimpanzee pants on them? 
I mean, a dog has a thing, you know. What are you going to do? I know, but you post a picture and they think... Chet Martin says, Dr. Savage, I was treated terribly when I went looking for Government Zero in a local establishment located in the Hamptons. Said establishment told me to stop coming in and asking for Michael Savage books. The store is called Book Hampton. So go to a Barnes & Noble. Forget them. That's all. They're liberal idiots. They don't believe in freedom of the press. Screw them. Looks exhausting. It's very funny. Uh, last one, okay, Bill Be Begala says, your book seems like it's doing wonders for Teddy's insomnia. People are funny. They have great senses of humor. That's why they listen to the show. They're not liberals. You ever notice liberals don't have any sense of humor anymore? Mean, 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 mean. Well, I'll keep the pictures of Teddy coming on my Facebook, and I will definitely uh, make sure his schmendrick doesn't uh, offend anybody. I didn't create him. God gave him one suit and one pair of shoes for his whole life. Now, I often look at a dog. You ever notice that when you give him something like a sock or like a, some rag or something that becomes theirs, how the, like you try to take it away, they go crazy. They snarl like a thing that loves you. Like They go nuts. Like <laughs> Suddenly they're like the shining. It's like, because why? They have so little thing. They have such little in life. Dogs have nothing. Nothing. They have no house, no clothing, no car, no insurance. Nothing. So you give them a rag. That's their whole world. No wonder they fight over it. Now, I could make a comment now about uh, illegal immigration, but I don't want to go there. But it's an easy jump cut, and uh, we'll avoid that. When I come back, I'll take more of your calls right here on the Savage Nation. And we have some breaking news for you. Even if we don't, we'll make it up like CNBC. Right here on the Savage Nation. Be here or be nowhere. Remember, you can call us at 855-400-7282. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. I'm like hung up right now on Larry King. I mean, he's on a little network on, on RT, right? And I just uh, did a, uh, you know, remember, he was an icon on CNN for years. So I'm looking, I mean, we share so much in common. I didn't know that. His father died of a heart attack at 46 died at 46 of a heart attack and his mother had to go on welfare to support her two sons king was greatly affected by his father's death and he lost interest in school and from an early age he wanted to go into radio well different than that i mean i kept going on to school my father died of a heart attack very young it wrecked me i mean i lost a lot of uh faith in life but it's interesting he and i have a lot in common but what's most interesting is that both of us lost our fathers young to heart attacks and we're still plowing along here very powerfully in the media. I find that amazing. In his case, it must be the garlic and women. I can't say what my secret is. It could be poodles and, ang and anguish. I, <laughs> I would say poodles and anguish keep me going. Uh, it's a different thing this year. You know, like last year, I'm looking back when I promoted uh, Stop the Coming Civil War. All the shows were in one week. I was on Alex Jones. I was on Jim Bohannon. I'm not going to be on Laura Ingalls' show till next week, and Alex Jones next week, and Jim Bohannon next week, and then the Larry King TV interview will be playing next week. So we're going to have a second surge about Government Zero next week when I replay some of the best pieces of these interviews. It's amazing. I think I'm going to get some garlic. Uh, I don't eat enough of it. I do. It's horrible. The dog, dog runs out of the room at night. What can you do? Look, it's... Uh, that's too personal, but the, there's definitely uh, benefits to that stuff. Russian penicillin. KSFO, WABC, KVOR, WJR, KSFO. Stefan, WABC, go ahead. What's on your mind today? Oh, all right. Let me begin. Uh, first of all, that saxophone playing, of course you can play that. Uh, you, you know what it is? It has to do with the way you articulate your notes. See, these guys, they were pioneers. They invented that way of playing the saxophone that had everyone, you know, just going crazy. A primo example is look at Louis Prima's sax player. You always hear Louis call him over. He's like, come on, Sammy, come on, Sam. And what happens is that these guys, they're, they're jazz musicians, but what they're doing, Mike, is they're playing the blues scale. And it, to it, it explains why you like... B.B. Kane explains why you like some jazz, and even explains why you like a lot of these oldies, because they all riff this pentatonic scale, and they use these... Wait, 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 they all riff to what? Wait, sorry, Stefan, they riff to what scale? 
It's it's the pentatonic scale. Penta meaning five, meaning five. No, no, I know what penta means. When you said I didn't catch the pentatonic, and of course the first thing that comes to mind is the pentagon and pentagrams of the devil. But I understand what you're saying. Pentatonic. So that's a little different than regular music. Yeah. Well, no. It's it's basically you take five notes out of the whole do re mi fa sol la el si do. You just take the you take five notes out of there. Now it's funny that you bring up the devil because. <laughs> This was, I, uh, I've been meaning to talk to you about this, but I never had an excuse to. The reason why they call this the devil's music or the devil's interval is because it has, first of all, it has five notes plus this one sixth note. That's the devil's note. That's the blues note. That's what gets B.B. King, you know, you gripping to his, his music. Oh, I love B.B. King. Are you saying, oh, so I'm being gripped by the devil? It figures. Well, hang on. That's actually what I wanted to talk to you about, because I really feel like that's not true, because gospel music also uses a lot of these blues notes, also the pentatonic scale. See, what happened was that Socrates is the one who figured out that if you start on the first note of any scale, then you start on the fourth note, and then the fifth note. That is God's progression. Now, those are God's notes. And what happens is, is in blues music, that's usually the progression they're doing, a one, a four, and a five. and then you Un So I, I, I don't understand music at all. I just know what gets to me. Stefan, are you a musician? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I, it, it, you know what? There's one thing that you said. You were like, if there's a few things that I can learn before I die, one of them would be speak Russian, and then the other one would be play the alto set. And forever, I'm like, no, no, it's the tennis sack you want to play, not the alto. The alto. <laughs> well, know, maybe one, maybe when I'm maybe when I'm 80, I'll move to Russia as a as a, as a tennis sax player. Maybe Putin will have me. They, well, you, you know what it is. Just in case God forbid something, you know, you're talking to the big man, and he's like, so you want to learn the alto? I want you to be like, no, 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 it's actually the tenor that I want. To learn. <laughs> so, where do you play music, Stefan? To be honest, I, I produce a lot of my own music. I, I play, I, I, I create, I, I compose music myself, and I just, I, I write my own music because I can't listen to the garbage that they're putting out now. I mean, everyone knows. All right, I'm going to do the same for you uh, that I did for the young Sam Gendel. You have any tapes you want to sell on the radio show? Give out the website. Oh, my goodness. You know what's so, oh, man, you know. It does, no, don't worry. Hey, look, I don't want to put you on the spot. I'm going to send you a copy of Government Zero. When you get yourself a website, you got some CDs to sell, give us a call. What an incredible call that is, right? I mean, I learned something. I got to look up the Penta thing and the Schmenta thing and the Henta and the Hunter, the Schmunter, the Huntergram, the Huntergram, the Hunter virus. Yeah, that Hanta virus is dangerous. I mean, I mean, mine's going into the Hanta Penta. You clean out like attics. You got to watch out for the Hanta virus. Remember that was big about three years ago. Everyone was afraid to clean attics and basements. They were dying within thirty hours from the rat doo doo. Ugh! What a world. <laughs> SF financial trader goes missing in London. Actor model Sam Sarpong dies of apparent suicide. Never heard of him. SF financial trader dies missing in London. Let's see that story. Okay. Josh, 24-year-old been reported missing in London. First solo in gone missing after arriving in the city for a job interview. Well, okay, I have my own suspicions on these things. I hope he's fine. I hope he comes back. But, you know, if you play a little on the wild side, uh, especially in a city you don't know too well, uh, sometimes you wind up in the Thames, you know, or in a closet. Uh, I'm not saying him. I hope he comes back and he's fine and he was just wandering around uh, the Chelsea Pier. Let's see another thing from the Psycho newspaper here in San Francisco. UC Davis researchers, that's an oxymoron except in veterinary medicine. Listen to this. Finding, uh, look at this crap. UC Davis researchers find sharing a husband may improve health, wealth, of family. Can you believe this? Can you believe the garbage they put out? And what are they using as a model? Tanzania. UC Davis research has found that practice of polygamy might boost the overall health and wealth of the family and benefit children. Yes, if you're living in Tanzania, morons. You you fund this kind of research? This is unbelievable. I, I never saw any, anything like this. I told you the zero science. I'm all chapter on it in Government Zero. Science has been melted down by liberalism to the point where it has no meaning whatsoever. Want to learn more about polyamorous life? Earlier this year, the members of an Oakland household with two women and one man raising two children shared with 
the newspaper, the benefits of their unique relationships and how they're making it work. Uh, you know what? Get back 